we've got Roger Musell here today from Rogers Wildlife Rescue and he's come to see some of our visiting school children and he's got some rather interesting guests to show them. Hello Roger. Hello. Well they're absolutely gorgeous aren't they? They are quite unbelievable <laughs> really. How old are they? They're about six weeks old now. Um, we know that because um, this particular one who we call Lark um, came in with his umbilical cord still attached, so really? he was only a few hours old when he was found by a dog in a lady's garden. Oh, right. And um, if the dog hadn't sniffed this thing on the lawn, they wouldn't have discovered that there was a fox cub there. Oh. Sadly, they were both in both cases, they were too cold to actually leave for the mum to come back for, so they had to be brought in and warmed up and fed. And of course, then we have to keep them until they can be released later in the year. Fantastic. When, when do you release them? Uh, normally about September, uh, yes. when uh, territories break down and uh, they're not so likely to be attacked by other foxes Oh, I see. So it's more, more about the time of year rather Yeah, than and year. also because they are mature and ready to go by the, right. you know, they're six months old and rearing to go. Oh, that's <laughs> so lovely. May I hold one? Of course. I'll give you the, the scruffy one. <laughs> <coughs> that one was found in Wooding Dean, this one was found in Patchen. Absolutely adorable. And what do you feed them on? Well, they're on the bottle still at the moment. They get a special veterinary milk, um, which is uh, quite expensive, and uh, they get five meals a day. And um, they're just on the verge of beginning to eat dog food now. Oh, nice. So okay. It won't be long before they're uh, off the bottle. Oh, so it must take you while. The well, it does. Um, I remember. I always. I never forget to feed them because we always feed them after we've had a meal. Right. So oh, that's a good idea. So it's breakfast, <laughs> dinner, tea, and then before I go to bed. Oh. Um, and uh, that just about is sufficient to um, keep the foxes happy. Oh. We've reared many fox cubs over the years. And, I'm um, sure. Um, we know just what they need now. <laughs> that's brilliant. So, what should people do if they see a fox? How, how would they know if it's abandoned? Well. First of all, you want to sort of take the situation in first, um, decide whether it looks as if it's suffering from um, being too cold or wet or just laying, or able to run around. If it's actually able to run around, then I would say if it's not an uh, unsafe place to leave it, then leave it where it is because right. often vixens will move their cubs and put them down while they go to get another one. Right. And they'll always come back for them. And move them. But of okay. course, if they're under the weather by being too cold or injured, then they need to be taken to rescue. a, to a rescue centre. <laughs> right. So, um, and how how would people contact you if they wanted to? Well, they can. Uh, most vets and the police know of us in the Brighton area and uh, or in Sussex really. Um, they can phone us on our landline, which is a, a Brighton number three zero eight two six eight, and. Um, we can uh, take it from there. Their next stage, once they're eating meat, is to go into a large cage in an indoor uh, room. Um, and from there they go to a shed out in the garden. And then they spend the summer in an outdoor enclosure, an open enclosure, where they uh, can get used to the weather and meeting other foxes through the wire and things like that. Oh. So uh, we only handle them like this at this age while well, they need to be handled for feeding. Yes. Um, once they're eating meat, then they don't get handled anymore. And um, they just get all their natural instincts back. This one's chewing already. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that they're quite ready to go by, by the time September comes. And um, we have a, a, quite a success rate with releasing fox cubs. And uh, many of them have survived for seven years that we know of oh, after they've wonderful. been released. Yeah, that's a fantastic job you're doing. <laughs> well, Roger, I know we've got some children outside really keen to yes, come and meet them. Yes, champing at the bit, aren't they? I think they are. <laughs> <laughs> so why do you think it's so important for children to meet wildlife like this? Well, foxes particularly, um, I think, need a bit of good press. They're not having good press these days. Right. And um, a lot of things printed in, in newspapers are not what I would expect the behaviour of foxes to, uh, to be. Um, it's said that they'll attack children and kill cats, and this is not what I find having watched foxes for over 40 years. Um, so it's important, as you say, with, with any uh, item of nature to uh, get into the children's minds while, while they accept 
things easily and um, they of course always love to see cuddly animals oh yes and um and they'll uh, i'm sure they'll uh, feel better as adults when they've uh, learnt more about these creatures when they're young. Yeah, I'm sure they'll remember as well for a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. You've only got to uh, stroke something that you never see and you'll never forget that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I get foxes in my garden. Do you? Yeah. Um, do you know what... You know well, how old they are? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I know they're six weeks old. Six weeks and old. So he was only hours old, that little one. So we know he's six weeks old, so and the other one's very, about the same. Very, very lucky fox cub. It's glad you are. I'm feeling quite teary. I've never even touched them. They are very soft, aren't they? They've still got this one particularly, he's still got his baby down. Um, and you can see the, the longer fur, longer, more adult fur is coming through.